Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Monday, August 29th, 2016. Here are our top stories. Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News, Obama's plan to bypass the Senate majority vote and ratify the Paris Climate Accord during his trip to China. The state of Europe's trade control negotiations and the plans to put the internet under the control of the UN. Is John McCain's political career in its death throes? A new challenger rises in Arizona. Is a nuclear winner the climate of the future for our economic system? As German savers lose faith in banks and stash cash in their home. All this plus special reports from the crew. US. Now this information comes as our president has given them a $1.3 billion gift. On the InfoWars Nightly News. The headlines in today's news remind us yet again that without a victory by the Trump movement, the nationalist movement as we have seen in Britain, we're going to have global governance. Take a look at the headlines. We've got a climate treaty for global governance that is going to be ratified by Obama alone with China. We've also got information about the TTIP, the internet giveaway, and of course, open borders. Open borders, these climate treaties, the trade treaties, those are all going to be used to create global governance and they're going to shut down our internet is just one of the things they're gonna do. Let's take a look at this amazing admission that Obama will bypass the Senate. Now, this is coming out of papers in China. Uh, they say that President Obama is prepared to enter into the Paris Climate Accord as early as this week, even though Republicans have insisted that the pact must be ratified by the Senate, according to a report out of China. Yeah, that's according to the Constitution, if we're still going to pay any attention to that. Now, they point out this is a South China Morning Post, they reported that Mr. Obama and the Chinese president are, quote, set to jointly announce their ratification of the ambitious international climate change pact on Friday, two days before the start of the 11th G20 summit. Okay, they say there's still some uncertainties in the U.S. due to a complicated U.S. system in ratifying such a treaty. They even say that, treaty. It's a treaty. There is a clear process in the Constitution for ratifying a treaty. But of course, Republicans and Democrats thumbed their nose at that process when they passed the Trade Promotion Authorization Act, which said that we're going to take a look at treaties uh, for the next four years through the term of the next president, as well as this president. They're going to bring these treaties in. And once they are negotiated by people unknown, then these things will be run through without any modification or amendment, without any debate or filibuster, and without any delay going through the normal legislation process. Now, they go on to say the director of the Free Market Competitive Enterprise Center for Energy and Environment described the report as, quote, curious because treaties in the United States require a two-thirds vote of the Senate. Oh, that's a guy that's read the Constitution. That is, of course, unless it is something like the trade treaties, which the Republicans will just pretend isn't a treaty. You know, it's a, a partnership agreement or a trade agreement. No, those are treaties as well. Now they go on to say, in China's Communist Party dictatorship, ratification merely requires their maximum leader to say, so be it. And evidently, that is the case in America as well. When we have a dictator, what does that mean? He dictates the law. The law comes out of his mouth. It doesn't come out of a legislative process by our elected representatives. And yet, our elected representatives have been part and parcel of turning this over to a dictatorial process. They want that to happen because they want to push this through in both parties. Finally, they say the Obama administration has maintained that the Paris Agreement is not a legally binding treaty and therefore does not require Senate ratification. Republicans have insisted that it does. So basically they just say, hey, this isn't a treaty, so we don't need to ratify it. And so I guess if it's not legally binding, we're going to be free just to ignore it as well. It is a important component of global governance because it's going to give them the money at a global level, a massive amount of money that they can redistribute with carbon taxes and other things, controlling our economy by doing that. Now let's take a look at where the uh, TTIP is going. And of course, this is the European version of the TPP. We stand here at the center with these two trade agreements that uh, think of them as wings on a uh, the, the body of a bird or a butterfly. We are the center. We're part of an agreement that's going to uh, be a trade agreement with Asia, the TPP, as well as the TTIP, which will be a trade agreement with Europe. And once we do those kinds of economic unifications, once our economies globally 
are managed by an international commission that is not reportable to us, then they essentially have the tools to create global governance, as we've seen with the European bloc. As their economic treaty begins to fail, they say what we need is more political control. Now, what's happening now is at this point, the European treaty appears to be in some difficulty in negotiations. And this, of course, is between the United States and the European Union. And the German economy minister says that he's not very happy with it. He said we have that has failed because we Europeans did not want to subject ourselves to American demands. I would say that it's far more than that. We have seen that the European people are far more awake about what's going on than the American people or the people in Asia. And they have quite frankly said they are not going to have this kind of widespread control of their economy. They have rejected it. It is not just on the German side where they have rejected it. And at the same time, we see that Obama is looking to give away the Internet to guess who? The U.N. This is an analysis from The Wall Street Journal. They say maybe it is naivete, maybe it is arrogance. Well, I would say it is globalism by design. They want to give this to the UN. They want to have control over the free press because that's the only thing that is going to stop their global governance in these other two areas, the climate treaties, the trade treaties, and the open borders. They go on to say in this article, concerning they, they filed a Freedom of Information Act trying to get information about how this is going to be handled from the Obama administration. So they said, we'd like to know what is going to happen with antitrust issues with ICON. That's the organization that controls internet names and domains. And they came back and said, we don't have any information about that. We're not looking at that. So the analysis from the Wall Street Journal is that without that, what's going to happen? In other words, ICON is using the Commerce Department and the American government as an instrument uh, of government control so that they have a protected monopoly status. Their contention is that once the U.S. gives up that protected monopoly status from the State Department, from the federal government, that this group will seek protection from another governmental body. And absent anyone doing anything about this, this could go to an authoritarian regime or another authoritarian regime, the United Nations. And Understand that the United Nations gave us the war on drugs. They created the agenda for the war on drugs. It was laid out point by point, schedule by schedule. They put the drugs in each of the four schedules, and they did that in 1961, 10 years before Richard Nixon created the war on drugs in 1971, copying that agenda verbatim into U.S. law. It wasn't our idea. No, it is a U.N. agenda that we have been suffering under for 40 plus years. And we see that the same thing is trying to be foisted upon us with the UN Agenda for Sustainability. It used to be called UN Agenda 21, now it is the Agenda for Sustainability 2030. So these types of UN agendas, we have a, a, a long standing tradition of these things being used by the American government to forward a globalist agenda. Now take a look at this last issue here, open borders and the most recent evidence of their Intention to eradicate all borders, as we saw the president of the EU saying borders were the worst invention ever. We're going to get rid of them. We now have the Obama administration celebrating the fact that they brought in over 10,000 Syrian refugees. They've done it before they thought they had to. And this is uh, only one half of 1% of these uh, people that have been brought in from Syria are Christians. Because, you know, nobody's trying to kill any Christians in Syria. Is simply a figment of your imagination. And this is, quite frankly, part of the great people replacement that we see happening all across Europe that Angela Merkel and the European Union have put in. This is the harbinger of what is going to be happening in the United States. And this is just the beginning. Hillary Clinton says she wants six and a half times the number of Syrian refugees next year that we've brought in this year. She wants 65,000 to be brought in. Now, tomorrow we have a very important election, a couple of states. We have primaries in Florida as well as in Arizona. One of the interesting races, of course, coming up out of this is John McCain. He's going for yet another Senate uh, term here. This guy is 80 years old. He's been in the Senate for 30 years. Evidently, he thinks he's going to live forever. He'll be 86 before this next term ends. And they say in the Washington Post, after 30 years in the Senate, during which he transformed himself from a war hero into a political icon, John McCain now finds himself in more jeopardy than at any time during his political career. And for much of that, he can blame Donald Trump. I would say we can thank Donald Trump for that. Thank you, Donald Trump, for putting him under pressure. And of course, it was Donald Trump who... Uh, 
talked about him earlier, but that's not why he's in trouble. He's actually in trouble because he is running against an arch conservative, they say, this is Washington Post terms, an arch conservative whose campaign received a late six-figure boost from a Trump donor. But they don't mention who that competitor is. They very carefully avoid giving her any publicity whatsoever. But we talked to this candidate. Her name is Kelly Ward. And Breitbart is saying that at this moment, uh, their poll, along with Gravis, uh, Breitbart Gravis poll in Arizona, shows a razor thin margin between John McCain and Kelly with an I, Kelly Ward. Who, and this is the election that will be happening tomorrow. Now, we talked to Kelly Ward at a Trump rally in Arizona earlier, and this is what she had to say. Well, you know, I'm running on a small government platform, less taxes, less regulations, the strongest defense in the world, the strongest military, personal responsibility, and following the Constitution. I don't think you can go wrong with that kind of a platform. And yes, I took a punch at uh, John McCain. Now, he took a punch at the president, right? He, well, kind of, but he punched and then he ran backwards and said, oh, no, no, I'm sorry, I misspoke. I will tell you that John McCain is directly responsible for the rise of ISIS. I'm not misspeaking, I'm telling you the truth. Um, his policies that he has had in place have allowed for a vacuum to be created in the Middle East that has been fill filled by a radical jihadi Islamic terror element. Now, the thing that's most concerning for me here on our soil is that John McCain has also supported amnesty and open borders. And so we have left a pathway, a wide pathway open for those emboldened elements to come right into our country and affect our country, our soil, and our citizens. It's unacceptable. Again, a very important race. And at this point, like I said, there's a close margin there. He is at 37 percent. She is at 33 percent in this poll. And 23 percent of likely GOP primary voters are undecided the day before the election. Amazing. So uh, pay attention to Kelly Ward. If you're in Arizona, we hope that we can get John McCain out because John McCain is one of the tireless warmongers and neocons and globalists that we have had for multiple decades. That's why the Washington Post is saying such nice things about him, calling him a war hero. And interestingly enough, it was about two or three weeks ago that the long talked about recordings that John McCain did for the uh, North Vietnamese, uh, the Tokyo Rose recordings that he did, were finally found out of the National Archives and released. So you may want to check those out if you're in Arizona before you go to vote. Now, we see major banks at this point are talking about how they need help from the government to bail them out. They're concerned. They're preparing for an economic nuclear winter. This is something from the Free Thought Project. They say after years of giveaways to mega banks that have been marketed to taxpayers as quantitative easing, the crutches that have been shoved under the banker-controlled global stock trade are about to snap. Bankers now say they are preparing for the collapse. And of course, as they point out in the article back in uh, June of 2015, and many of us have been warning about this, they quote Ron Paul saying, these crutches are going to fall, the financial bubble is going to burst. And now we see on Sunday, speaking on condition of anonymity, a source from a major investment bank told CNBC, quote, financial service firms have put together a strategy in place that takes into account the worst case scenario that could happen by the end of this year. The banks, he said, are ready for anything now. They say the grim warning comes after the Royal Bank of Scotland has warned its investors of a cataclysmic year. They say sell everything except high quality bonds. They've said earlier, this is about the return of capital, not return on capital. In other words, try to save what you have. Forget about trying to make any money off of this. Just try to preserve your capital. In a crowded hall, exit doors are very small, they said. So Here's the situation, folks. We're constantly told by the mainstream press, by Obama, that things have never been better. And yet the reality is that everybody is preparing for the exits. They're preparing for the worst. And they are putting off this information, lying to the public, trying to hide the true situation of the true state of the economy until after the election. We can see even that the, as far as oil prices go, they have not been able to, even with a rapidly falling Prices of oil, they were never able to uh, stimulate the economy enough. So they were seeing multiple examples outside of the stock market, which they artificially inflate. We see multiple examples of troubling news about the economy. Meanwhile, the Wall Street Journal points out that German savers have lost all faith in banks, and they're now starting to stash 
their cash at home. They say German sa savers are leaving the security of savings banks for what many now consider to be an even safer place to park their cash home safes. And understand, this is about the war on cash. This is about the war on privacy. And what we're seeing here is a blowback, a backfire. So people are saying, why should I have to pay the banks in order to save money? There's absolutely no reason to leave the money in the banks. They know the government can take a cut. They can put negative interest rates on them. They can seize the cash that is in savings deposits. So there is a massive market now in Germany for home safes to keep their money in. It's all part of the war on cash. The more they try to tighten down, as I said in Star Wars, uh, the more you try to squeeze out the rebels, the more it's going to squeeze through your fingers, just like water. And that's what we're now seeing. And that's a positive development to see that blowback, because it truly is about privacy and anonymity, as well as uh, keeping your cash available. Now, stay with us. We're going to have some more reports that are going to be coming up. And today, I would remind you that we have a 20% sale on vitamin mineral fusion drink at InfoWarsLife.com. Of course, that is the supplement that gives you your daily vitamin supplements as well as minerals that you need in a liquid form. Very bioavailable, very easy way to take this. And one of these canisters that you can now get 20% uh, off and as many of them as you would like to get, that is one month supply of multivitamins and minerals. Take a look at that product at InfoWarsLife.com. Stay with us. We'll be right back with more reports from the InfoWars Nightly News. Well, Obama has promised one last gift of his presidency, and that will be handing over U.S. control of the Internet. Now, when the administration announced this idea to hand over U.S. protection of the Internet, it promised that the United Nations would never take control. But according to The Wall Street Journal, that's the most likely scenario. On Friday, Americans for Limited Government say they received a response to their FOIA request for all records relating to legal and policy analysis concerning antitrust issues for the Internet Corporation for Sign Names and Numbers, or ICANN. Well, the administration replied, saying it conducted a thorough search and they weren't able to hand over any records. So, of course, this is shocking because it means that the administration has no plan for how ICANN retains its antitrust exemption, uh, which is why it's able to operate globally worldwide, uh, because they have a contract with the U.S. government. So if they no longer have that antitrust exemption, they're going to have to find another government agency um, to keep that antitrust exemption. And authoritarian regimes have already proposed ICANN become a part of the United Nations so that it can make it easier for them to censor and control the Internet globally. So this means that the administration is either totally idiotic and naive or this was the plan all along, which is, of course, what Alex Jones has been saying for years. That this is part of the plan, a U.N. agenda to take over and control, regulate the Internet. Now, we're seeing one of these uh, members already working on this. We have uh, George Soros some leaked documents proposed um, from George Soros's Open Society Justice Initiative actually calling for international regulation of private actors' decisions on what information is taken off the Internet and what may remain. Those regulations should favor those most supportive of open society. So here we have someone with global influence, one of Hillary Clinton's pals, uh, figuring out how they can control and regulate the Internet and, of course, control the bad actors who do not agree with the open society's agenda. And of course, we're already starting to see the Soros plan in action because these leaked documents were one of 2,500 documents released by the hacktivist group DC Leaks. But as reported by the Daily Caller, the section of DC Leaks website that was dealing with George Soros has been gone. It's offline for unknown reasons. So, you know, here they are. This is part of their regulation of the Internet. They say it's needed to protect freedom of expression. But that's just uh, stopping anyone with ideas counter to them, which is exactly what we're starting to see Google doing as well. Uh, they're directly engaged with the Clinton campaign. This is according to Julian Assange of WikiLeaks, who reminded everyone that the chairman of Google, Eric Schmidt, actually set up a company to run the digital component of Hillary Clinton's campaign. Courts uh, reported on this as well. They called it Eric Schmidt's stealthy, uh, back, a stealthy startup to get Hillary um, Clinton elected. And it's just one of a series of quiet investments by Schmidt that recognize how modern political campaigns are run using data analytics, digital outreach, but of course, censorship. And now we have reports of Google hiding 
the Clinton body count search suggestions. Now, this is Google has completely altered its search algorithms now, preventing any searches for Clinton body count for, from auto completing. This is despite the term auto completing when you type it on virtually any other search engine. The Clinton body count is an infamous list of alleged murders connected to the Clintons, the latest one being, of course, Seth Rich. So if you try to search that in, um, it's, it, it hides it, just like it is hiding any searches over Clinton's health. And this is funny because we actually have a New York Times journalist saying Google should hide Hillary health videos. And now today, Adon Salazar reports, Google censors Hillary Clinton health problems from their search results as well. So they're doing everything they can to shut down anybody being able to search this. And that's not all. Even now we have the Huffington Post banning a journalist for daring to write about Hillary's health and they deleted his articles. Uh, this was journalist David Seaman. He penned a commentary piece discussing questions surrounding Hillary's health problems. He was discussing Paul Joseph Watson's video that has now over three and a half million views. So it's very newsworthy. It was trending number three on the website. They pulled it. They fired him. And of course, this just comes on the uh, heels of Hillary camp Hillary's campaign vowing to destroy any opposition like Breitbart. She says they have no right to exist. So we can just expect more of this kind of censorship in Hillary's America. As we head into the regular NFL and NBA season, don't be surprised when multi-million dollar athletes start opening their uninformed mouths in an attempt to sway the national conversation towards division. Case in point, 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick refused to stand for the national anthem, later explaining, I am not going to stand up to show pride in a flag for a country that oppresses black people and people of color. To me, this is bigger than football, and it would be selfish on my part to look the other way. There are bodies in the street and people getting paid leave and getting away with murder. First of all, that was a statement of division. America is under a fierce attack by globalism. If we don't stand strong as united citizens, that anthem Kaepernick refuses to acknowledge may not eventually even exist under Obama's Trans-Pacific Partnership. Yes, we have an epidemic of bad cops getting away with murder, but this doesn't mean all cops are guilty, and it certainly doesn't mean the rest of America is either. It means our justice system is corrupt. Shouldn't the movement be renamed to Bad Cops Matter? When anyone with celebrity status supports Black Lives Matter, they are knowingly or blindly supporting George Soros, a self-described megalomaniac hell-bent on using his status as a foreign billionaire to divide the United States. Soros once wrote, I fancied myself as some kind of God. If truth be known, I carried rather potent messianic fantasies with me from childhood, which I felt I had to control. Otherwise, they might get me into trouble. That's who you ultimately support, Kaepernick. You want to change things? Acknowledge the breakdown of civilization that allows 483 people to be killed in Chicago so far this year. Education has been repackaged and become an unaffordable burden. Industry and commerce have been shipped overseas. Opportunity has become scarce. It's not race that matters. It's the economy, stupid. Breitbart reports, more proof came out today when our own Commerce Department downgraded the second quarter GDP from a horrendous 1.2% growth to a depressing and tragic 1.1%. Our economy is wrecked and dysfunctional. The other America. And I use this subject because there are literally two Americas. One America is beautiful for situation. And in a sense, this America is overflowing with the milk of prosperity and the honey of opportunity. Tragically and unfortunately, there is another America. And this other America has a daily ugliness about it that constantly transforms the buoyancy of hope into the fatigue of despair. 
In this America, millions of work-starved men walk the streets daily in search for jobs that do not exist. In this America, millions of people find themselves living in rat-infested, vermin-filled slums. In this America, people are poor by the millions, and they find themselves perishing on a lonely island of poverty in the midst of a vast ocean of material prosperity. To make matters worse, there is a huge deficit of skilled labor, welders, electricians, machinists that the upcoming generations aren't claiming. Where is the effort to steer that kid off the mean streets into a life of responsibility and relative comfort? Kaepernick, take it from Seahawks cornerback Richard Sherman who recently said, I was not suppressed by any man or woman, white or black. I worked myself up from Compton High School to a scholarship at Stanford University and I did it myself. It is out of the mouths of cheap thugs that are hurting our young and taking away the chances they have to make themselves a productive part of society. Brothers and sisters, the only slavery in America now is the one you put yourself into, Kaepernick. Isn't it just a little ironic that greater men than you have fought and died for your right to insult their sacrifice? John Bound for Infowars.com. I'm Margaret Hell reporting for Infowars.com. A troubling report has surfaced in Breitbart that suggests that Iran is sponsoring terrorism in Latin American countries that are hostile towards the U.S., that they're expanding their terror network in Latin America, specifically Venezuela, and that they're solidifying its foothold uh, and they're using their embassies and their intelligence operative centers to do this work. Now, one Hezbollah operative was found uh, traveling. He was traveling with a Venezuelan passport, but he was picked up in Brazil with an explosive device found very close to the Israeli embassy in Uruguay. And uh, Hezbollah members, they're reportedly traveling on Venezuelan passports. They're easy to get. Um, they've been offering flights to Iran and Syria as of last week. And Hezbollah cells, they were found in the West Bank. Uh, they were uh, Venezuela lifted with their visa requirements. They've also been giving them to Palestinians who support Hezbollah and the cause. And uh, the State Department, the U.S. State Department, it's aware of this trend. It says that it's it's waning in the Western Hemisphere, though Iran's influence in the West is, is on the decline. This report was in 2013, but it's 2016. And we're finding that their uh, diplomatic guise is that they're going into these countries and they're actually sponsoring terrorism against the U.S. Now, this information comes as our president has given them a $1.3 billion gift, a reparation, if you will, for a 1979 military sale gone bad, as well as lifting sanctions so that they can continue with their nuclear activity and sponsor venture is just like this. They're doing it in countries that have found hostility, that have founded hostility towards the U.S., like Venezuela, Cuba, uh, places where um, Nicaragua, places where they can get passports and visas in the hands of Hezbollah very easily, no questions asked, and it doesn't look like they're actually sponsoring the terrorism themselves. Well, it sounds like a big round of dirty pool to me. I'm Margaret Hell reporting for Infowars.com. <laughs> If you needed any more proof that the media is just there to distract you from the real news while protecting their preferred candidate, look no further than the fact that Wienergate is once again making all of the headlines. Now, this, of course, is a total non-story. It's there to make Huma look like the poor, jilted wife who now gets to be the strong, independent woman for leaving her loser of a man who is once again caught up in a sex scandal. Well, she clearly isn't reading the magazine that her mother publishes because it wouldn't allow her to leave this husband. You know, we could just take some of these women as wives for crying out loud. You know, this guy, uh, she thought she was going to have this political sham marriage right her way to the top. He was Schumer's pick. Schumer was his mentor, ninth district congressman. He was on his way. But of course, he's got this little problem uh, that he then blames on somebody else that tries to launch a fake FBI investigation accidentally hitting the wrong button and publishing the crotch photo. Um, who does this sound like? I did not have sexual relations with that woman. It is interesting, but you're right. absolutely right. It's a, it's a distraction from the real story at hand that we have covered here on InfoWars, the fact that she has links and ties to Saudi Arabia and the Muslim Brotherhood, and that she is completely incompetent and careless with classified information. That's the real story. The side story, oh yeah, by the way, she's married to a creep.
Yeah, she's married to a creep. So these mm -hmm. pictures were taken, it uh, looks like, about July 2015. The woman, uh, she might have gone to the Post to sell her story, but why is it all coming out now? Now, these were pictures, you know, from last year at some point. Well, the reason why is because it's a huge distraction from all of the damaging stories that are coming out about Huma Abedin that the mainstream media refuses to talk about. So let's get into that. Now, you mentioned um, her total inability to uh, take care of classified material. She played a pivotal role in the setup of Hillary's mm -hmm. server, okay? So you can talk a little bit about... Well, she absolutely did. So, and we know from WikiLeaks and her correspondence regarding Hillary Clinton, she calls Hillary Clinton confused, has to repeat things multiple times. We know that Huma Abedin, she's been the nudger in terms of foreign policy, specifically when it comes to the Middle East, mm -hmm. uh, because Hillary Clinton is, uh, I, I don't want to call her old because that seems mean, but she is off her game. So she's got this woman in her pocket that makes every major foreign policy de decision for her or nudges her in those directions. We know that from these emails when she calls her confused. This woman, um, the hostility towards the U.S. And, and our own immigration policy. We know right. that she's influencing everything. Yes, she Leanne. was caught on an undercover camera by James O'Keefe <laughs> actually talking about how, the, you know, don't worry about it. The Democratic candidate, Hillary Clinton, is going to make sure those Syrian refugees mm -hmm. are, are taken into the country. Don't even worry about what's coming out of the GOP. They're going to make it happen. We know that uh, she left classified material unsecured in the front seat of her car. Mm -hmm. So that right there is, you know, something that people need to understand. We know that Hillary Clinton created a burn bag of things that she would give her her aides to go destroy at the end of the day because she didn't want those in the record. And then Huma forgets to go and burn those Whoops. things. Oops, left them. <laughs> My car's not locked. Can you go stick him in the trunk? <laughs> so already we have two people totally incompetent. But what's even more frightening is the fact of that there are some major Muslim Brotherhood ties here, uh, Saudi Arabia ties, pulling the strings at the State Department and now potentially at the highest level in, in office right. if she becomes the president. And what a hypocrite. You know, I, I really feel for this woman, frankly. You've got a toddler sleeping in bed with your husband who's who's screenshotting pictures of his crotch and send, sending them out ad nauseum. But at the same time, you know, if she would just practice what she preaches, I mean, she wants our country to be radicalized clearly by the, the policies that she's pushing. You know, read the magazine that you're publishing. You know, he has every right to do this. You don't have a right to leave him. It seems really hypocritical to me. And I don't mean to seem harsh because I really feel for her. But at the same time, if you're publishing this stuff or if right. your mother is, you might as well practice what you preach. I mean, this is, what do you think this is? And of course, we are talking about the fact that Huma Abedin was uh, the editor of this radical Muslim journal that her mom was in charge of. Her sister is involved with it as well, also mm -hmm. named as an assistant editor. Uh, but of course, that is another one of these big stories that's coming mm -hmm. out that people really, truly need to look at this and investigate it and discuss it. But they want to distract us from the fact that Huma Abedin's mom is um, playing this active role at this radical Muslim journal. Uh, Huma was listed as the assistant editor of the journal from 1996 to 2008. She was Hillary Clinton's top aide mm -hmm. during this entire time. But then we also know her mom was linked to this uh, shocking anti-woman book. So this was uh, Hillary Clinton. She actually went to speak at a Saudi girls' school run by Huma Abedin's m mom. Um, but she also invited this elder Abedin, the mom, to come and participate in a State Department event for leading thinkers on women's issues. So in 1999, her mom translated and edited a book titled Women in Islam, A Discourse in Rights and Obligations. This was published by the Institute of Muslim Minority Affairs, the parent company being the Muslim World League, which will be key here in a minute. But this book explains that stoning and lashing of adulterers, the killing of um, apostates, sexual submissiveness, and even female genital mutilation are all permissible practices under Sharia law. It also talks about the wife should satisfy her husband's desire for sexual intercourse. She has no right to abstain except for reasonable cause or legal prohibition. So. Right, and stoning for adultery only if you're female, by the way, because Correct. men can pretty much do whatever they want. Your property and you have no rights. Um, Look, she doesn't practice what she preaches clearly, but we live in a Western world. My heart goes out to this woman only because dealing with a cheater publicly, wow. You're right in that it's a distraction from the real stories going on. And there are so many questions even surrounding her own sexuality. I mean, why is this man sexting for years in this desperate attempt to have any sort of female pay attention to him? You know, what's going on a little is my question. Yeah, many for people her. think that there's like a secret lesbian love affair going on <laughs> with her and Hillary Clinton. 
Um, but, uh, you know, getting back to just we have the 28 pages uh, bring up a lot of points The declassified 28 pages. Um, they are tying the World Assembly of Muslim Youth, specifically being named as having connections to terror funding and support for a number of worldwide terror groups. Mm -hmm. And of course, the Abedin family business shares an office mm -hmm. with this group who shortly after 9-11 was named as a terrorist organization. <laughs> so this is frightening. You can't say, oh, well, they just they're in the same building, but there no connection, no connection <laughs> at all. Terrorist organization. Look away. Look away. But there are some major questions for Huma Abedin. Of course there are. She was the conduit to the Clinton Foundation, often funneling people that needed citizenship or access to the country through the Clinton Foundation. You know, they would give large sums of money, one of which was on a terror watch list and couldn't enter, even though he gave this mass sum of money to the Clinton Foundation. That makes perfect sense to me. You know, why doesn't everybody just share an office? It would really cut down on the paper dragging, I would think. You know, Absolutely. that's... Uh, one big revolving door. Right. And that's the thing here is like we cannot allow ourselves to be distracted by Wienergate. Once again, <laughs> we need to have Hillary Clinton and whom Abby Dean answer these questions before that woman gets to be one of the most powerful leaders in the world. Here we have someone with ties to terrorist organizations having the ear of the potential future president. This is something that we seriously need to investigate and discuss. This is Ashley Beckford reporting for Infowars.com from the Austin Pride Festival. I'm here to find out if people believe that there's one presidential candidate that they're preferring that's going to actually uphold gay rights and give people the freedom and opportunity to live their lives the way that they feel that they should. Let's find out. Do you think that Trump uh, is going to ban um, gay marriage? Absolutely. Think so? I do. I do. He's already said it. And you know, he says what he says. He's going to do what he's going to do. Well, Hillary flip-flopped because at first she said that she was for uh, gay uh, civil unions. And then she ended up saying uh, that she was for marriage later on when it became more convenient. Just as in everything else, people have evolved in their decision making because they get more exposure and they actually get to talk to people. And so she started to listen to all the different communities of how important their issues are. So you can't look at something from the 70s and 80s and say someone doesn't change their opinion over time. They do. I believe that marriage is not just a bond, but a sacred bond between a man and a woman. I do not support gay marriage. Okay, I can understand that, but my whole thing is she supports Saudi Arabia and different African countries that actually will throw gay people off buildings and murder them in different ways. What do you think about that? I disagree, and so I don't think there's enough information there, so I can't answer that. There she is. There's Hillary. Yes, queen. She's a racist Goldwater girl. Here she is in the 70s. She loves Saul Alinsky. She loves... Barry Goldwater against the civil rights no, movement. Was, no, no. That's You're wrong? wrong. I'm wrong? She left in after, after that Republican convention in 1969 because of the veiled racism. I don't know what false narrative you've been following, my friend, but I'll bet you're smarter than that. Check the facts. How you doing, my man, at InfoWars? No. I believe it is time for American to produce a female president because if it, she has a true love, true love for American. She has, she look, look at her eyes. She's have an ego eyes. She's a woman of destiny. It is time for women to rule America and show the right direction. Hillary Clinton is the right lady, right person, right president for America. Yes. Wrong. Hillary Clinton has been a lying racist for her entire life. Oh my God. Yes. Oh yes. God. She's part of the Democratic Party. From FDR to LBJ to Bill Clinton and the crime bill. Hillary has a true love for America. That's right. True she love. does not have a true love for America. Trump has a true love for America. She's not faking. No, she has true love for America. What about Haiti? Hillary Clinton have true love for Haiti when the Clinton Foundation stole all that money from Haiti. Okay, her handlers are advising her not to speak anymore. She's shouting something. We have something un, un understandable. Hell no is what I say. By the way, 
1972, she went to South Texas and she registered yeah, Hispanic voters and she stumped for McGovern. Get your facts right. Listen, I have my facts right. The bottom line is Hillary is part of the Democratic Party, which has been systematically bringing down the back black community for a long time. Really? Yes. Oh, is that so? It's true. No. Okay, well, maybe. The d hey, but we're working it out, girl. Can you come to meetings and stuff and give them shit? We just put forward the most progressive platform ever, thanks to Bernie and the revolution. And we opened our ears. I would love, I would love to find out what Hi, what hi Alex Jones, hello, love, how are you? I would love to know what they're gonna do, what Hillary's going to do, and the Democratic Party's gonna do for the uh, LGBT community and the black community. Hillary Clinton is gonna make sure that we're not walking around with these police officers shooting us and killing us, acting like we do not deserve to live. That's what she's going to do. Additionally, she's going to make sure that we have affordable education, that our black people who have been denied education by Republicans for years to get affordable education, affordable health care, honey, everything, honey. So, Alex Jones, you need to delete your YouTube channel, delete your account, and delete your life. Toodles. No, 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 no. In the midst of all the backlash of Colin Kaepernick sitting during the national anthem during his last football game, he has now decided to double down and says he will continue to sit during national anthems before his football games. And while Colin Kaepernick has all the right to sit during the national anthem, this has proven to be a bad mistake for his image, and we're now even seeing fans burning his jersey and saluting the national anthem while they do it. And while it's nice to see athletes getting involved uh, with, with messages outside of the sports plantation, perhaps even trying to raise awareness for issues they see in this country, it, it's not good when they're raising issues that they are not understanding. It's not good when they're causing the sheeple that they're entertaining to move towards these movements or these talking points that are really unfounded. Again, this is Colin Kaepernick, a half-black football player, who was adopted by white parents who makes hundreds of millions of dollars playing football. I promise you, Colin, I promise you, there is no other country where you can go play football and make a hundred million dollars only in America. He also took it further in an interview and said that both candidates are racist. Now he cited why he thought Hillary Clinton was racist, a comment she made saying that black people are predators, but then when he was talking about Trump being racist, he just said he's openly racist and provided zero evidence of why he actually believes that. And Colin Kaepernick wants to protest oppression for black people in America. You know, there are real countries where real oppression is going on, where if you would have sat in North Korea during a Kim Jong-un worship ceremony, you would be disappeared, okay? You wouldn't be allowed to play football anymore. You wouldn't be allowed to do an interview. You would be disappeared, okay? That's real oppression right there. Colin Kaepernick, you are not oppressed to the extent that you think you are. I promise you that. Now, this is all part of the Bread and Circus Inc., obviously, with the NFL and their ties to the government. The Pentagon, paid 14 NFL teams five and a half million dollars last year to salute troops. So Colin Kaepernick wants to raise awareness about black oppression, but, but Colin Kaepernick doesn't understand that if all of Colin Kaepernick's fans, if all of the 49ers fans devoted the same energy towards actual causes and researching the actual issues that are going on in America, they could actually do something about it. But instead, they just want to have some sort of a celebrity cause protest, like sitting during a national anthem to draw more attention to yourself. I think Colin may actually be a little upset that uh, he's been riding the bench and so he had to do something to draw a little more attention to himself sitting out this national anthem. And, and we've now seen multiple NFL players do protests like this. We had Rams players come out and do the hands up, don't shoot during an introduction after the Mike Brown shooting when that was a total false narrative. So Colin Kaepernick, a multi-million dollar black athlete in America, 
is protesting black oppression in America while not even realizing that there's other countries where that same protest would have had him disappeared. And there's no other country where Colin Kaepernick can go and make $100 million playing football. So while Colin Kaepernick is executing his right to free speech, sitting during the national anthem, I would ask you this, Colin. If you want to raise awareness of issues, if you want to actually make a difference on this planet, do a little research, get a little depth of your knowledge, find out the real issues that are going on with America. If you want to talk about black oppression, why don't you talk about the fact that at abortion clinics in New York, you're uh, more than likely to die from getting aborted if you're a black baby than you are of being shot by a police officer. But you want to protest the police brutality. That's what you want to protest. And you want to say that people fighting for this country aren't fighting for everyone's rights, as if there's some true systematic racism going on. The true systematic racism is against the human race, Colin. And as soon as you figure that out, maybe some of these fans that burned your jerseys and think you're an embarrassment will come back on your side. So I asked Colin Kaepernick, if you want to draw light to issues in this country, I suggest you do it in an intelligent fashion. This is Owen Schroyer from Infowars.com. That's it for tonight's news. Thank you for joining us. Join us again tomorrow night at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern for the InfoWars Nightly News.